It's good to be able to be back at the House of Lords tonight on Wednesday night. And, uh, youth is going to be stepping out and going to their service tonight. And we uh, appreciate again those who work with them. So we're taking a look tonight and uh, continuing with our commandment series. If you'd like to follow along, uh, we're going to be over in the book of Exodus chapter number 20. Once again, down at verse number 8. Exodus chapter 20 and verse number 8. You want to find your place there if you've already got it marked. And uh, we'll be taking a look at quite a bit of different scripture. We're going to read four verses here tonight. So let's uh, read from God's Word where it says, Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work. Thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested on the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the seventh day, and hallowed it. Let us pray, Father, again. We thank you for thy word. I thank you, Lord, for the scripture. I pray, God, that you just help us, that you may open our hearts and minds again tonight uh, to that which you'd have us to know from thy word. And, Lord, we give you praise, honor, and glory for these things. Ask in thy name. Amen and amen. Thank you. Stand, you may be seated. Tonight, well, again, we are looking, I said, at the uh, commandment series, and uh, we are looking at the fourth commandment in the word of God. And I've called this one the fulfilled Commandment, and the reason why is because it is it needs to be fulfilled. It needs to be fulfilled. Uh, during the exile to Babylon, God's people was not denied uh, the Lord's day. Now we call it the Lord's day. We call it Sunday. We call it church day. You can call it whatever you want to. The Lord called it the Sabbath, and He also called it the Lord's day. Uh, down in the verse number ten again, it said, "But the seventh day is the Sabbath." of the Lord by God. It's the day of the Lord. It's the Lord's day because he worked six days as we had seen in the scripture and then he rested on the seventh day. So that's where, where we're talking about. But now, uh, when I, but the, as I was talking about the, uh, uh, the exile to Babylon when the children were taken into captivity, they were not denied their opportunity to worship the Lord on that seventh day. Even though they were uh, in exile, they were in uh, in, in ca captivity, so to speak, they still had the privilege to worship. They did not break that commandment. Second Chronicles 20, uh, 36 and verse 21 says, to fulfill the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jerusalem until the Lord had enjoyed her Sabbaths for as long as she by desolated she kept Sabbath. To fulfill Three score in ten years. So I read that scripture because that's basically what I'm talking about. When they were in captivity, uh, the purpose of them keeping it was so that they could fulfill that commandment. That's why it's called the fulfilled commandment. Uh, you need to remember, and I keep saying this, and sometimes you repeat, sometimes, sometimes I repeat things so that you may know this. And as we go through this, you should, by the time we get done, you should know all the commandments pretty well. Uh, and, and, you know, I said I'd give another test at the end see how well we've done. But, uh, uh, you know, we're not going to get into detail test or anything like that. Uh, but just remember the first four commandments that we see here listed in, in this chapter and also uh, in the book of Deuteronomy, because it is repeated again in the book of Deuteronomy, uh, we see the first four commandments are to be kept toward God. These are what you would call Commandments to God, the promises that we make to God, and this one is basically that we are make, we are uh, we have a commandment to remember the Sabbath and keep it holy, and to not work on that day. So that's what we're looking at there. The remainder of what we will see from verses twelve on through verse number seventeen, and then we're going to pick up a couple more that's over in the New Testament because I believe Jesus Christ gave us a, uh, some new commandments that we need to take a look at. Uh, but uh, uh, the remainder that are listed are toward man. Commandments that, that, that go toward man, but it is to honor God. Even though we are to keep these commandments toward man, 
We're, do, we're doing it to honor God. Now, what is the commandment? What is the commandment? We are to remember the Lord's day and keep it holy. Now, you say, well, it doesn't say thou shalt remember the Sabbath. It just says remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. Hey, if God said it, it becomes a law. It becomes a commandment. There's, there, there's no sense in us putting words in where they don't belong. God intends on us to keep the commandment of remembering the Sabbath and keeping it holy. Deuteronomy 5.12 says, now we'll turn to the scripture in a few minutes. I, I got a couple of these wrote down. Deuteronomy 5.12 says, keep the Sabbath day to sanctify it as the Lord thy God hath commanded thee. So it, they basically commanded that we keep that day holy. We separate it from all the other days of our lives and make sure that this one day that we dedicate to the Lord. Now, that's not too hard. God gives you six days to pretty much do what? Continue to do whatever that you choose to do or whatever you need to do. But on that one day, one out of, six, uh, one out of seven, he's asking us to keep it holy for him. Okay? Uh, now, verse 11 says, The Lord blessed the Sabbath and made it holy. So God made it holy. He's the one that done this. Okay? Uh, he, 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 he hallowed it. That means he made it holy. Uh, so therefore, it needs to stay in that realm. Okay? Now I'm not up here. I'm not up here to uh, 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 the preach damnation upon anybody that works on Sunday or anybody that does anything other than going to church on Sunday. I'm not up here to slam anybody for doing anything like that. Uh, and, and the reason why is, again, because the commandments was not necessarily given to you and I as to beat us over the head, so to speak, but to help us that we become better Christians for the Lord. And what better way to become a better Christian for the Lord is to take a day and honor and glorify and worship Him, whether it's coming to church or whatever it is, that we remember that day. Uh, so what is the Sabbath? Of course, it is the seventh day of the week, as we know. Um, it is the day of rest, and it is the day of worship. Uh, God created for six days. He worked for six days. He rested on the seventh. Now, God didn't need to rest, folks. We, we need to understand that. Why? And the reason why he has done it this way, and, and you'll see it a little bit uh, according to uh, the book of Mark, God gave, God made the seventh day for man. He didn't make man for the seventh day. He made the seventh day for man. And so therefore, God says man cannot take too much. He knows the weakness of man. He knows that man can only do it so much. And he said, so therefore, do what you have to do for six days. Rest on that seventh day. Keep it holy and worship. Judaism worships on Saturday Christians worship on Sunday. Okay? Now, we can stand here and make an argument. Uh, what, uh, where, what's the first day of the week? For us, we go to work on Monday. That's the first day of the working week. And, that, and we've always counted it that way. I didn't set it up that way. It was set up way before I came along. And I'm just going to keep right on going like it is. I mean, who am I to change it, you know? Who am I to say, well... Praise God, we're not worshiping on the right day. We need to be over here on Saturday. You know, I, I'm not doing that. It wasn't, I didn't set it up. Some, somebody else set it up, and I'm just going to honor it, and I'm going to keep on going. So just remember that. People says, why does the Baptist say they worship on uh, Sunday? Say, well, because Judaism, the Jews, say, Jews, they worship on Saturday. We Christians worship on Sunday. Pretty good natural to me. <laughs> Amen. So just remember that particular thing. Now, the commandment is, I said, what is the commandment? The commandment, basically, that God gives us here is listed in verse uh, number 10. It says, but the, uh, yep, it says, but the seventh day is the seventh day of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not, there's your thou shalt not, not do any work. So there's the commandment. Okay? Uh, we're to remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. That is a command. But the commandment part is we're not to do any work on that day. Now, uh, 
we can get into some big time discussion when it comes to these things, okay? But the fact of the matter is, that's what God's Word said. He said, not only are you not to work, your son's not to work, your daughter's not to work, your man's servants, your maid servants, your cattle, nobody is to work. Keep that day holy and not work. Uh, now, we're going to look at some scripture. So if you would take your Bibles and go with me over to Leviticus, Leviticus chapter 23. Keep your hands in Exodus because we will be coming back. Leviticus chapter 23 and verse number 3 if you would. Let's look at this verse of scripture. As God said here, six days shall work be done. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest and holy accommodation, and ye shall do no work therein. It is the Sabbath of the Lord in all your dealings. So no matter what goes on, remember that day is the Sabbath day. We're not to, we're not to work. We're not to do any dealings. We're not to do any sales. We're not to do any trading. We're not to do anything of that sort according to Scripture. Now I know what everybody's going to say. This is Old Testament, Old Testament commandment. Listen, folks, these commandments, Jesus Christ did not change when he was here on this earth. A lot of people say, well, when Jesus Christ came and we came under grace, it done away with the old law and, and got away with the Mosaic law, and now we are under Christ's law. And, and just you need to remember, Christ did not change the Old Testament. It was and still is the same as it always has been, even Jesus Christ, as we have mentioned one other lesson, how that one man came to him and Jesus said, keep the commandments, and he named off the commandments. Uh, Jesus himself named off the commandments, and he was naming off these commandments right here. And as he was mentioning them to the man, the man said, I've done all these things. And the only thing Jesus Christ added to that at that point was, then you need to sell all you got and follow me. In other words, he's looking for a dedicated life. See? So we see here that these commandments were not changed. Jesus still holds it true today that we are to remember that Sabbath to keep it holy and do nothing on that day. Okay? Now, again, remember what I said last week. A person will not be sent to hell if they work on Sunday, if they do any dealing on Sunday, if they do any trading on Sunday, if they do any selling on Sunday. That is not the penalty. Okay? That is not the penalty. Uh, we will look at the penalty if you'd like to back to Exodus chapter 31. There is a penalty for working on the Lord's day. Exodus 31, verse 15. You notice these uh, also as you're finding your way over there. Uh, the scripture says six days shall you work and rest on the Sabbath. Six days shall you work. And, uh, and you know, I don't know who got it started a long time ago that you work five days and you take two days off. And now uh, most companies uh, to keep from uh, having to pay insurance they backed everybody down, and everybody's on part-time now, and most people only work three days a week. And that's a full-time. That, that three to four days a week now is a full schedule, is a full work time. Man, I tell you, we just keep backing it down, and keep backing it down, and keep backing it down. Someone said one time, one of the reasons why some of the Asian countries are so much far advanced in technology as the United States is because they still work six days a week. We're not, you know. So, you know, it's, it's just to think about. All right, we're in thir uh, uh, Exodus 31 down to verse 15. Penalty, it says, Six days may work be done, but in the seventh is the Sabbath of rest. Holy is the Lord. Whosoever doeth any work in the Sabbath day, he shall surely be put to death. Now, this is talking about, this is talking about a physical death. It's not talking about the uh, death of hell, it's talking about the physical death. Uh, the best thing is just make sure you're ready. <laughs> now, I mean, you know, I'm just saying. Uh, God is serious about this. Now, if you want to, I'm keeping you busy a little bit here. Go to Numbers chapter 15. I'm going to read several scriptures here uh, in, in a row. Uh, Numbers 15. I'm going to read you a story. A story of somebody who broke the commandment. And you're going to see where the word came from. All right? Bible says in Numbers chapter 15, verse number 32. You there? It says, While the children of Israel 
were in the wilderness, they found a man that gathered sticks upon the Sabbath day. And they that found him gathered sticks, brought him unto Moses and Aaron, and unto the congregation. And they put him in ward, because it was not declared what should be done to him. Now, let me say this before I finish reading. They said it wasn't declared what to be done to the man when he, because he was found picking up sticks on the seventh day. Now, if God had done, been, done said, anybody that works on the seventh day, they will be put to death. Now, so therefore, it goes on verse 35. It says, And the Lord said unto Moses, because apparently Moses went and talked to the Lord about this and asked him what he's going to do. The Lord said unto Moses, The man shall be surely put to death, and all the congregation shall stone him with stones without the camp. And all the congregation brought him without the camp and stoned him with stones, and he died as the Lord commanded Moses. God's pretty serious about this thing on the Sabbath day and keeping it holy. Uh, he, he, he basically commanded this man to be put to death because he broke that commandment. Okay, So there is penalty uh, for breaking commandments and doing wrong. Now, we know this is where grace comes in. We know because we are under grace that God has sent his son to die for you and I for the penalty of sin. So when we break commandment, grace is sufficient. Cover all sin. Now that does not give us liberty to go out here and break the law, break the commandment. It is the fact that we are to continue to keep these commandments the best that we can and just remember them and do the best we can. But when we fail and when we break them, we know that grace is sufficient to forgive us again. Okay? That's where the difference comes in in the Old Testament and the New Testament because we are under grace. All right, I said it is a day of rest. Uh, we see that in Genesis 2, 2, Exodus 23, 12, and Exodus 34, 21. Every one of them says the same thing, that the Lord worked six days and he rested on the Sabbath. So it is a day of rest. Old Testament, they were not even to kindle a fire, as you say in Exodus 35, 3 tells us that. That uh, you can't even kindle a fire. So what did that? Uh, what does that mean? How many, how many of you remember back back a few years back? Okay, when when Grandma was still here on Earth, that they never even cooked on Sunday. Can y'all remember that? I, I mean, you know, they done what they had to do on Saturday and Saturday night to prepare for Sunday. So that Sunday they didn't have to cook. They just went in there and ate what they had. You know. Uh, of course, I know they probably didn't have chicken because they nobody wants to go cold chicken, you know, uh, unless you're a preacher. <laughs> then it's a different story. But uh, uh, no, I'm serious. They they they've done everything. They've done all their preparations. I mean, I remember I remember my grandmother getting things ready for church on Sunday on Saturday. She even got clothes laid out on su uh, Sunday or uh, for Sunday. So that when you got up, you just got your clothes and got ready and left, you know. Uh, that's the way it was. Uh, used to, they had a hard time getting people to work on Sunday, uh, and so therefore that's where the young people came in at. They went and started drafting our youth, and some of us were that youth that they drafted to show up to work on Sunday. Because the older people said, no, I'm not doing it. It's against, the, it's against God's commandment. I'm not going to do that. So they, they, they enticed the young people to start working on Sunday and now, I hate to say it, uh, to this world, Sunday is just another day. It's just another day. Man, I'm telling you, whenever we were traveling uh, to Asheville and I was pastor there, I don't know the times that I looked at my wife, I said, I want you to look at all these cars, and I know they're not going to church. I said, Man, where is everybody going on Sunday? It's like they're just as busy on Sunday as they were on Saturday. Now, I'm not saying you can't go somewhere on Sunday. I'm not saying that. Uh, you know, uh, I didn't, I'm, just, I'm just telling you what the Bible says, okay? I'm just kind of trying to show you what God's Word says. I know some people that would never, they wouldn't even go out and eat on Sunday because they felt like, if I go out and eat, I'm making someone else work. And then someone said one time, they're going to work anyway, so why not go? You know, we compromise. We compromise. Uh, 
I know of a man that was in the last church I passionate. Uh, he'd tell his wife, he said, uh, you're not cooking on Sunday. But at the same time, he sent her to the local restaurant every day to pick up their, uh, on Sunday to pick up their lunch. I'm like, you know, it's a little controversial thing there. But that's the, way, that's the way some people are. I'm just saying, however you do it, that's when you and God. I'm just giving you the scripture. The Lord's day was made for man, I said in Mark 2, 27. Uh, not, not man for the, uh, for the Lord's day. In other words, God gave us that day so that we can have it to rest, so that we can have it to worship, so that we can have it to get away from the things that go on. I don't know about you, but after being in the world or around the world during the week, I love. I, I want to have a day of just being around God's people and being in church and taking that day to worship the Lord and just loving on God and Him loving on me through His Word and and stuff. And you know, I you know, I I I, I wait for that day to come, you know, because it's a very special time. Now, this is the people's view. The people's view is no work but play. Okay, it's the people's view. No work. But play. It's okay to, 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 to do things on Sunday as long as it don't interfere with worship. Okay? I'm going to give you some scripture on this one, okay? Let's find our way to Isaiah 58. Now I know somebody's going to say, good gracious, what do I do? <laughs> Preachers, he's laid the, line, laid the law down on us now. What, what are we going to do? Isaiah 58. Just remember, God's grace is still sufficient. Amen. 58 and verse number 13, if you would. Isaiah 58, 13. The Bible says, If thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, in other words, if you turn yourself around and don't honor the Sabbath, from doing thy pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight, the holy of the Lord, honorable, and shall honor him, not doing thy own ways, nor finding thy own pleasure, nor speaking thy own words. Well, what's it talking about? The Lord's saying, if you, if you will not turn your foot, if you will stay, uh, 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 stay respectable unto God's day, keep the commandment, worship Him, and not take that day as your own pleasure. Not take that day as your own delight. Don't, take out, don't even take that day for your own words. In other words, uh, be still and know that I am God. Take a day and let God speak to you. That's what he's trying to say in the scripture. Uh, now, Exodus 31, 17, I'm going all the way back to Exodus and because uh, uh, I want to read one more verse over here in Exodus 31. And verse number... Uh, 17 of this verse of chapter it says it is a sign between me and the children of Israel and I hope I'm in the right yeah okay uh, uh, for in six days the Lord made heaven and earth and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed notice the word refreshed that was the reason for the Sabbath day is for refreshment so that we can be refreshed um uh, I remember a story of uh, a, a, a study that someone done one time about people who work seven days a week. Have you ever known anybody just do that? I mean, work all the time. They were workaholics, okay? Uh, sometimes you have to. Sometimes your job is demanding that you have to do that. God understands that, folks. God understands that, okay? Uh, but they done a study, and they took uh, two workhorses. And they went out and they started working them for seven days, uh, for, for every day of the week. They went for six days of working these horses. The, uh, on the, uh, after the sixth day, they took one horse and put him in the barn, fed him, rubbed him down, and let him take the rest. The seventh day rolled around, they took the other horse and didn't give him a break, didn't let him sit down, took him right back out there and worked him. That seventh day, that horse Done, didn't do half the job that it done all week long. It was dragging. They could not get that horse to work good. On this eighth day, the horse fell over dead. You said, what happened? You ever heard the old phrase, you know, you work like a horse? <laughs> uh, that, that study is a proven fact that we, our bodies, have to have a day of rest. I don't know what it is, 
I can sleep a little extra longer on Sunday mornings because I don't have to get up early to go to work. But it never fails. My eyes start getting heavy later on in the day. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. And then it, I, can, I can even take a nap sometimes. I don't normally take naps. Sometimes I do doze off, take a nap. But it never fails on Sunday night. I am still worse life out and just want to go to sleep. You know? And then Monday rolls around I don't want to get up. <laughs> the reason why my body just literally was shutting down because it went for six days that week. Good. So, you know, uh, now as preachers, we sometimes have a tendency to do take another day uh, of trying to relax a little bit because we do preach on Sundays and stuff like that. And it is, it does take a lot out of you sometimes, uh, you know, depending on how the Holy Spirit gets a hold of you. Uh, but, uh, you know, it, it does take a lot out of you. All right? So anyway, uh, just remember the Sabbath, keep it holy, and day of rest and get refreshed. Uh, it is the day for church. It is a day for church. Leviticus 19.30 says, You shall keep my Sabbaths and reverence my sanctuary. I am the Lord. Now, I, I read that verse for this purpose right here. That word Sabbath there has an S on the end of it. It was plural. So I got to look at that, got to think about it, and I thought, why did God put a plural on this Sabbath? Now, of course, in Leviticus, he's talking about the different seven days, seven days, months, seven years, seven things, you know. I understand what he's talking about uh, uh, in, in Leviticus, but I got to think about that word having an S on it. God is trying to bu uh, basically say, don't. not only are we to reverence the Lord's day one time, but we're to do it every time, multiple times. Every time it rolls around, we need to worship the Lord and go to church. He said, he said reverence my sanctuary. He put that in there. In other words, the building. Um, preaching and teaching is done on the Lord's day. Luke 4.31 and uh, Luke 13.10, both of them talk about the Lord Jesus Christ. He was in the uh, synagogue on the Sabbath. Preaching and teaching God's word. So that's why we have preaching. That's why we have teaching on Sundays. Okay? Uh, we prefer teaching at that point in time in Sunday school. And yes, uh, Jesus didn't go to church. Okay? He did go to church. People says, well, I hear people say, well, Jesus didn't go to church. He, his church was out on the streets and he went door to door. Uh, yeah, we need to do some door to door too. But he was in church on Sunday too. Matter of fact, uh, maybe one day I'll, uh, I'll break down to show you how we're to be in church Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night. It is in the scripture all three times. Okay? Now I know I'm preaching to the choir tonight <laughs> when I'm talking about this part because y'all are here. Amen. You say, well, you don't preach to them other folks. Well, the windows open, they can hear me. <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm just saying that we are to remember that. And then in closing tonight, let me mention this, and I'm going to be done. Uh, the Sabbath day is a good day for remembrance and to remember. When we come to church, I encourage you to remember the Lord and all that he has done for you and then worship him. You can't go wrong with those thoughts. Okay? Remember all that God done for you all week long, how he took care of you, how he blessed you. Man, I tell you, I was praising the Lord. I told my wife, I said, uh, my finger's turning blue, and she said, what did you do? And I said, by the grace of God, I didn't cut my finger off. Uh, I grabbed the end of the saw saw while it was running. Don't ask me why. I, I didn't want it to pinch up against the wall, so I grabbed it. And it, that blade went right across my fingers, but it didn't cut me, it bruised me. It, hey, I'm going to remember that Sunday morning and thank God that I still have a finger on my hand. You're supposed to you know, remember all that God done for you all week long and give him worship. Remember that God gave us this great opportunity to rest, to get refreshed, and to continue our lives for him. Because as we, can, as we observe the Sabbath day and worship him and rest, then we're able to continue on. Okay? So that was the that was the fourth commandment. Lord willing, uh, the next time uh, uh, next week we'll be looking at the failure commandment, the failure commandment, and we'll look at that about honoring our father and our mother. Okay. So uh, we thank the Lord for the scripture. Let's go to the Lord in prayer and we'll close. Father, once again we thank you so much for thy word. We thank you, Lord, for the scripture. We thank you for the lessons, Lord. We thank you for all that we are to learn. 
pray God you help us now that we be committed to thy word. And Lord, we'll just try our best to keep thy commandments the best we know how. Father, and when we fail, we know thy grace is sufficient. Help us to call upon thee. And Lord, I know that the Bible says if we seek you, you'll come to us. And Father, I pray that you'd help us in these things after thy name. Amen. Amen. God bless you, church. You are good to go now.